Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. And that so soft pickup. A nice one. Yeah, they're deep. They're deep. Uh -huh. <laughs> it looks like it's gonna Look at that thing. <laughs> that was rad. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Dude, that is a tank, right? Yeah. I think I got him in the mouth, too. Nope. Oh, damn it. Backside. Not for a second. That's a it's a cool looking one. <coughs> yeah, he's, he's ugly as hell. Yeah. He's wandering the wasteland looking for fuel. Just walk away. Yeah, that's a tank. Let's see if I can get this guy landed. Look at that thing. Teeth on that thing. Dude, you should see that picture is gonna be sick. Right that little side view. There. Yeah. Oh, it's in Alaska. Uh -huh. It looks like it's in Alaska. Look at that thing. <laughs> that was rad. <laughs> All right, guys, show you uh, where I caught that last fish is an overhead view of uh, the intake. And you can see all the kokanee there getting ready to uh, go up creek and spawn. Uh, but in this underwater shot, you'll see there's uh, all kinds of uh, splake and uh, good-sized browns mixed in with the kokanee. So we aren't after the kokanee. We're trying to get these splake and these browns because these kokanee are about to spawn uh, and they end up dying afterwards. So they, they, they aren't in the, in the mood to, uh, to eat anything. So we're really trying to get these browns and these splake and get the bait down to them. So, uh, let's see how we do. Baby brown trout, Spartan minnow. Feels pretty good. Of course, we didn't bring our floating nets with us. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's definitely rolling like a cutty. That's a nice side one. Yep. There you go. You're looking cutty. He ate all of that minnow too. Off you go. Junkie bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if that jig. Yeah, he's gonna hit you in the knee. Nice. Good fighter. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he's extra mad. That's a nice size one. Yeah, some decent fish here. Right on. It's so rad. You see him roll perfectly clear. Don't even need the underwater camera. The only downside is now I gotta put my hand in the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got some good colors. Come here, son. Yeah, look at that. All spotted up, too. Pretty fish. All right, ladies and gents, there you have it. Before we get started with the debrief, if you like what you saw here, take a second to give it a, uh, the channel a like and a subscribe. Really helps the channel out. Uh, it really helps me gauge that I'm putting out good content for you guys. Uh, so just take a second to do that. Don't cost you a thing. <laughs> now, uh, uh, fishing all these different lakes, these different conditions, and getting uh, multiple species of trout uh, is very interesting. Like um, the first lake we were at that had all the kokanee, uh, one thing that was interesting, it was, it was clear water. We were fishing in intake. Uh, uh, there was lots of active uh, fish in the area, uh, including the kokanee that were on the spawn, but there's also those splakes and the browns. Uh, uh, one thing that we noticed, typically with clear water, you want to fish uh, more natural looking baits, right? But in this case, what was natural, the kokanee had their fall spawn colors, so they're all bright, bright red and black. So uh, what did Art uh, end up getting that biter on was uh, El Diablo, which is a bright red and black uh, bait, which uh, can be sometimes uh, uh, counterintuitive to what you would fish in normally clear water. Uh, just like I've been at some other lakes, uh, whether it's up in Utah or up in the Sierras, uh, where there's lots of brook trout. When the brook trout get in their, their fall colors, their spawn, uh, they get real bright red, orange. And uh, sometimes then uh, uh, jigs like a, a big stick uh, uh, will work or these brightly colored jigs that you don't think would work in clear water will because it looks natural to the trout at that time. So uh, uh, that's, I guess, the key to fishing all these different water conditions is uh, choose colors accordingly. Uh, look at what's in the water. When you're at, uh, like say we're at uh, uh, Red Creek Reservoir, that water's very murky, a lot of green tinge to it. 
Uh, sometimes a green or a brown will work better and it matches almost the water conditions, which seems like it wouldn't work, but it does. It looks a little bit more natural to them, just like the colors of the kokanee or the brook trout when they're in spawn mode. Or the last lake we were at, a uh, very high altitude lake. Uh, it was very cold, even though it was bright and sunny, it was very cold up there. Uh, the water was uh, crystal clear and uh, it was not very deep. Uh, but what they were onto was a uh, uh, white and yellow mini jig, uh, just we were calling it mac and cheese, but uh, uh, which is a very bright colored uh, jig. Because I started off fishing uh, uh, baby brown trout. Uh, I think I put in a caramel apple, some of the more natural looking uh, presentations that we have. But what they wanted was that white and yellow. Um, uh, why that was, I don't exactly know. But uh, uh, to me, that seems like something that wouldn't work in the brighter water conditions, but it did. That's what they wanted. So to sum up and explain how you catch fish in all these different water conditions is be flexible. Have lots of baits, have lots of different colors, have lots of different uh, styles of fishing, um, and that's what's going to help you be successful everywhere you go uh, as much as you can on every day. So there are sometimes the fishes aren't going to cooperate no matter what you do, but there are lots of times where if you just change something a little bit, uh, it's a difference between catching and not catching. So with that, I got a, a QR code posted right up here. It's a link to all the uh, companies that sponsor me. Uh, whether you want to get on the uh, uh, Katana Rods uh, Instagram, that's the only way to get Katana Rods right now. However, uh, uh, there is a website coming. So uh, uh, things are changing on the Katana Rod front. As soon as it does, I will let you guys know. But, but currently, uh, click on the, uh, the QR code here, uh, go to the Katana Instagram and, and send them a message if you want a Katana rod. Um, the Golden State Fishing Custom Baits, the RHA uh, Tackle Spoons that I use and love, and the uh, uh, Waterland Sunglasses that I also love. Um, they are all listed on this QR code. It's on a link tree. If you go to the video's description, it'll have all the websites and all the uh, discount codes and exactly how to apply them if you're uh, interested in getting some of those fine products. Now with that, uh, uh, SoCal trout season's opening up. Uh, I will be at uh, Hesperia Lake, uh, Lake, Lake, uh, Lake this Thursday for the opener. Uh, I'm gonna miss the mud hole opener. They open on Saturday. Uh, my kids have a, uh, a figure skating tournament up in Vegas, so I'm gonna be up there. Um, uh, but the next week I will try and get out to the mud hole uh, uh, and other parts. Uh, I heard Santee opened up. Uh, oh, and also we got uh, uh, Pyramid, so end of, uh, I believe, uh, this month, we're going to try and get up to uh, our first Pyramid trip uh, of the year. So I uh, uh, got that to look forward to. And uh, uh, as, as things happen, and uh, as I hear of things, I'll certainly let you guys know, either here or on my Instagram. If you ever have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them here. I love answering them. Uh, hit me up on my Instagram at Spanker Outdoors if you ever have questions. Um, uh, and well, I guess, uh, I guess we'll see you out there or hope to see you out there, uh, somewhere local or even out, uh, out at the mid. So, uh, until next time, tight lines.